So school-based outdoor education for me, um, it's a context uh, to help teach the students to learn. So to me, it can be broadly defined as relocating standard curriculum teaching to places outside the buildings and walls of the schools uh, as a supplement to indoor classroom teaching. So with this definition, I think that everything can fit in it. The most important thing for me is to have intentions and uh, being clear on the intentions. When you're clear with your intentions, you're not just going outdoors just for fun or uh, uh, reward activity, uh, but intentions can be so various. Uh, it can be to uh, explore the environment. It doesn't mean that you need to learn something really specific, but uh, as long as you have intentions with your students uh, related to the curriculum, I think that uh, for me, it's school-based outdoor education. I think that there are many benefits uh, for outdoor education and uh, it's well grounded in the scientific literature. So there are many, I can maybe uh, give you some examples of uh, general categories that I like to present. Uh, the first benefits for me is uh, about the eco-citizen dimension. So we want kids to be connected with nature and uh, we want to do some environmental education. We want them to understand the challenges of the 21st century like uh, the climate change or the loss of uh, biodiversity. So relate in relation with the citizen uh, dimension, we know that developing an emotional connection with nature is a powerful predictor of respect for nature. And uh, I can tell you also that it's the first predictor, that's the strongest predictor. So uh, it's great to talk about nature, uh, but if you don't develop an emotional connection with kids, uh, it will be really more difficult. And uh, being in contact with nature, it help also it helps to protect the, the environment and to have a better attitude toward the environment. So I'm not reading everything on the, on the slides, but uh, I'm commenting at the same time. So there's also the cognitive dimension. We know that uh, a brief contact with nature can have positive effects on learning and attention. Uh, obviously, it's not only being outdoors here because we're talking about contact with nature, but we know that uh, there's a theory of a restora uh, restorative attention theory. So you can go outdoors being in contact with nature, for instance, then 10 minutes, and you don't have to have a learning intention here. But when you come back into the classroom, uh, usually what we see in the research is that the students have more attention during about the 20 minutes following uh, contact with nature. Uh, it can also help learning uh, retention and also uh, it enables learning to be transferred to everyday life. So if we only learn in the academic context, it will be more difficult for students to transfer the, their learning in everyday life. Um, there's also the health dimension. Uh, outdoors, students are generally not in a, having a sedentary behavior. So it increases light physical activity, even if you're not going outdoor for physical uh, education activities. And there's a lot of uh, outcomes we, we could discuss about that. But for instance, contact with nature, uh, it's proven to lower uh, blood pressure to reduces the risks uh, associated with myopia. Uh, there's also psychological, uh, psychological dimension. Uh, so nature-based learning reduces anxiety-related symptoms. Uh, it's also recognized to increase well-being, not only for students, but also for teachers. And uh, we see some research also uh, who are uh, finding that it boosts uh, it boost feelings of self-efficacy and self-esteem. And the last uh, dimension is the social dimension. It can be, uh, it can seem anecdotal, but we, we know that there's a lot of uh, studies who are interested in this dimension. So it's generally conducive to the development of social relationships between students. Uh, it also adds, uh, offers additional opportunities for collaboration. And there are more and more research uh, focused on the potential to increase equity, especially for students who don't have uh, access to outdoor uh, as often than other kids. Um, like, what were you surprised by with, with your research on outdoor ed? 
something I find I find amazing about other education uh, research, and also when I go uh, in schools to and when I discuss with teachers, is that there are plenty objectives we can achieve with outdoor uh, education. And uh, I'm a science teacher at high school levels uh, uh, first, and uh, I was going outdoors to connect science learning with uh, uh, with real life. And what I find really fantastic is that we have often some students that we qualify as being problematic and uh, oh, he's, he's uh, distracting the others, so I don't want to, to go outdoors with this kid. But what we find is, that, and what we observe is that these kids often they become uh, great students with the leadership because they can they can move they can, they are not uh, they don't have to stay sit on their chair and just listen kids need to need uh, to move and when there's physical activity like physical activity uh, with uh, cognitive activity it helps students to be more engaged so i think that we need to keep that in mind uh, not only to engage students in cognitive activity, but also in light physical activity. And the outdoors is a great place to do that. Mm -hmm.